Hello everyone, and welcome back to yet another video. Today I wanted to talk about the top 10 hardest captures in Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia. In the past we've already looked at some of the hardest fights in the main series games, we've already looked at the hardest recruits in several of the Mystery Dungeon games, as well as the hardest catches in some main series games. Today I wanted to take it a little bit different, and I wanted to start looking at the Ranger series, as it's one of the series that doesn't get as much attention, and it still is a very interesting series to look at. Without further ado, we're going to get into the list. Before we do, do leave in the comments what you think uh, will be on this list, or if there's any Pokemon that you struggled with uh, when playing the game yourself. That being said, let's get right into it with Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia, the 10 hardest captures in the game. Number 10. First up on our list, we have Swellow. Now, Swellow is not actually that hard to capture, uh, but it's mostly just a very annoying Pokemon. Swellow is a Pokemon that appears only in the capture arena, and it's mostly just a painful one to get because it tends to be zooming around. Like, realistically, you should never die actually trying to capture this Pokemon, but uh, when it gets to move around in combat, it tends to just go from one end of the screen of, uh, to the next, all, all the while doing very rapid attacks left and right. Because of how fast it attacks, it is really hard to get more than a couple of circles in between any given attack. And in a speedrun setting, that makes this fight particularly slow. Now, if you fight, the, if you take this fight slowly, it shouldn't actually ever kill you. So, casually, it's not a very difficult one. But I still wanted to include it on the list, just on account of how much just zooming around it tends to do and how annoying it can be. Number 9. Next up on our list, we have Drapion. Drapion is kind of the first major boss that you have to come uh, that you come across when playing the game casually. The reason I included Drapion is in two part. First off, it is kind of the first boss that tends to really be difficult to do. Drapion's attacks are much faster between like when it shows an exclamation mark and it's actually attacking than it is for most Pokemon. And unless you know how to stun a Pokemon very efficiently, that can make it very difficult to catch it. The other part that uh, makes me include Drapion on this list is that, is that before you actually fight the Drapion, there are several fights with grunts that you have to do that you can't really go around that easily. Now, if you get lucky, you'll level up off of the last grunt before the Drapion and you'll go into the fight at full health. But it's not uncommon for you not to level up during that, and as a result, start the fight at lower health than you'd want to be. Now, as a combination of the fast attacks that he tends to do, as well as the fact that you have multiple Pokemon you need to beat before you can even fight him in the first place, that tends to kind of make Drapion one of the first kind of bigger problematic fights if you're not experienced with the game. Now, his attacks generally aren't that hard to dodge. He does one that's just in a line across the room. He does one that is like directly around him. And I believe he has another one where he throws a puddle on the ground somewhere. But even despite that, like just the fact that you have to do multiple fights and then he can throw a lot of attacks your way, not to mention his attacks doing a lot of damage for this point in the game, makes him definitely deserving of the number nine spot. Number 8. Number 8 on our list, we have Weavile. Weavile is another Pokemon that can only be obtained through the Capture Arena, the area where we do back-to-back -back battles against various Pokemon increasing in difficulty, similar to how we had Swellow earlier. Weavile is far from the most difficult Pokemon to get here, but where this Pokemon make, what makes this Pokemon particularly difficult is that you have to that you have to fight four of them at once, while at the same time dealing with another Drapion, our previous entry. Now, considering the capture arena is pretty far into the post game, at this point your level will be a lot higher, so you can deal with the damage a lot easier. And then the speedrun this fight is actually fairly easy, because we can fairly easily keep them stun locked, because if you stun them very close together and start circling, you charge up Pachirisu very, very quickly. However, once these Pokemon kind of get to escape and kind of get to jump around, it becomes possible for them to deal a lot of damage very quickly and it makes it really difficult to get new circles in. The combination of a lot of Pokemon at the same time, them being able to jump around very quickly, 
and just kind of being an annoying one to deal with in general definitely makes it worthy of this of a position on this list. Number 7. For number 7 on our list, we have another story boss, Heatran. The fight itself starts out fairly simple. Heatran basically has three attacks it can go for, the first of two of which are fairly easy to play around. The reason Heatran makes it to this list is specifically his third attack. See, after Heatran has done his first two attacks, Heatran will do a move that will make a puddle of lava permanently show up on the field. Again, this first one is fairly easy to play around. However, he then does two more attacks, after which a second one spawns, and then, you know, it repeats a third time. That means uh, that on the three little dots on the, on the field, if you don't get him quick enough, he will spawn a bunch of lava puddles that will make it really, really difficult to actually start circling around the Heatran without getting hit by it. This is combined with the fact that Heatran itself tends to deal quite a lot of damage for, how, uh, for its point in the game, dealing like 20-ish percent of your total health per hit. Once this lava puddles have spawned, that makes Heatran an incredibly difficult Pokémon to capture. And the fight itself, while easy if you get him very quickly, over time becomes more and more difficult to the point where it becomes really hard to actually beat him. So, Heatran is one of those fights that, if you get him fast, no big deal, and it's very easy to actually do the fight. However, as soon as it starts taking more time, this fight gets progressively harder and harder until it becomes very, very difficult to manage. And that's why Heatran deserves the number 7 spot. Number 6. For number 6 on our list we have Celebi, and Celebi is really on here for just one reason. It is a nightmare to chase down. Celebi's overworld movement is the fastest of any Pokemon in the game, being faster even than while you're riding the Doduo. Since Celebi always runs away from you, and at any given point in time is trying to escape you, and there are a ton of grass tiles that slow you down around where Celebi is, it makes it really hard to even get this encounter. Now, Actually getting the Celebi once you've encountered it isn't necessarily that difficult, not more so than it is for most other Pokemon. But it's incredibly fast movement and it constantly trying to run away from you combined with the grass tiles makes it just very difficult to get him in the first place. Now, once you get to the fight, it's not the easiest in the game. Celebi has a few moves that, you know, will keep circling around it or uh, a, and it has a screen wide attack but most of them aren't too difficult on the uh, to actually dodge, and since you generally get Celebi really late in the in the game, uh, as it's a part of a post-game side quest, uh, you know by that point, actually battling it shouldn't be the difficult part. Still, considering it can be such a time waste to even encounter it in the first place, I still felt it was worth adding to the list. So that's why I figured Celebi should be number six. Number 5. For number 5 on our list, we have probably a Pokemon to nobody's surprise. It's Darkrai, the final boss of the game. Darkrai consists of two parts. Uh, in the first phase of the fight, you basically don't do anything. You have to wait him out for about 30 seconds to a minute, uh, and then after that's done, uh, you know, a cutscene plays making him actually vulnerable to your attacks. Now. In between you get healed, so generally this isn't too difficult, and you can use that time to charge up Pachi if you uh, if you want to. The second part of the fight is where things get a little bit tricky. Darkrai is or tends to jump around the room a lot, and there's a lot of uh, things going around on the screen, especially in the second half of the fight, that just make it kind of hard to see what's going on. The Darkrai fight itself is far from the most difficult in the game, but with how much there is going on on the screen, it is fairly easy to take a lot of damage without really realizing that you did, especially if you're not used to doing this fight. Combine that with Darkrai's relatively fast attacks, and the fact that it is quite far away from the last save point, as it takes like 20 minutes between the save point and actually doing the second part of the Darkrai fight, and Darkrai kind of just becomes a potentially difficult uh, problem here. That said, 
you know, Darkrai is the final boss of the game, so it's probably no surprise. And really, even as the final boss, it usually doesn't, or it's usually not too hard, especially if you brought one or two healing Pokemon with you. But I couldn't not mention Darkrai in the, uh, over the course of this list. So that's why it's been added at number five. Number four. For number four on our list, we have Lucario. Now, Lucario is on this list um, because it is just a really annoying Pokemon to fight. Lucario has two places where you fight him. First in the cap uh, first in the story, and then later on in the capture arena. And the fight is basically the same both times. Lucario is a Pokemon that, for most of the fight, isn't really that hard to deal with. He tends to jump around a bit, which means it's a little hard to actually stun him, but his attacks aren't that big, even though they are somewhat fast. Where it becomes a problem is that when Lucario gets charged up, and this tends to happen quite easily, uh, he starts to attack very rapidly, uh, throwing around orbs, you know, close range, uh, close range punches, uh, long range orbs that go into one direction, Lucario just tends to deal a ton of damage, or at least potential damage, in a very short amount of time once it gets charged up. As a result of that, it is one of those fights that if you're not careful, it can be very easily uh, a bit of an issue to deal with, especially with how close after Frostlass it is. So oftentimes you'll not go into this fight at full health. So yeah, that's why Lucario deserves the number four spot. It's a pain to deal with, it can very easily kill you, and with its no uh, position in the game, that really doesn't make this easier either. Alright, and with that, we are on to our top three. On number three of our list, we have Frostlass. Now, I just mentioned Lucario, and I mentioned that the first time you fight him is just after the Frostlass fight. And Frostlass itself is no joke either. Frostlass gets this high up on the list for a few reasons. But the main one being its incredibly high damage output for the position of the game that it's at. Frostlass has several attacks that kind of uh, make it easy for it to damage you with being one of the first Pokemon that has attacks that circle around it. Uh, it can throw an icicle that kind of just sticks around where uh, even if it moves around just for a little while but it does stick around and while easy to dodge when it starts uh, being in annoying positions because it is still so early in the game you very often don't really um, have the line ranges needed to keep circling easily now on top of that it can also throw out the little flame that basically starts just jumping around and every time it hits you you take about eight damage frostlass's damage output being really high compared to its uh, moves that just tend to be a little annoying to deal with and the fact that immediately after the frost last fight there is another big boss definitely make it deserving of a higher spot on the list so yeah frost last is easily one of the hardest bosses in the game here and that's why it's here on number three number two and with that we are on to the penultimate pokemon of this list and Number two is really a tied spot between three Pokemon. For number three, or sorry, number two, we have Charizard, Flygon, and Salamence. Now, this is the last time we're going to visit the Capture Arena on this list. But at the very end of the Capture Arena, um, there are three Pokemon that you have to fight at once. Now, many of the Pokemon in the Capture Arena are repeats from earlier Pokemon that you have to fight. Charizard, Flygon, and Salamence is not one of those. Now, the reason that this Pokemon becomes so difficult is, first off, you have to beat the entire Capture Arena to get here. So, even just getting to them takes a fair amount of time. Once you get here, the fight itself isn't exactly the easiest either. Now, if you have Pachirisu, the fight can get very easy, because if you get them close together, and you, you can try to keep them stunlocked and spin a bunch of times around them and you keep charging it uh, because of those spins. However, if they do end up separating, this fight can spiral out of control very, very quickly. And if you don't have a Pokemon like Pachirisu to stun these Pokemon, it can become even bigger an issue. 
As a result of this, Cherizard, Flygon and Salamence, who are all three individually already really powerful, definitely make for one of the harder fights to deal with in the game, especially if you don't have Pachirisu, or if you can't get them close together and stun them all at once. I do want to say I really like this fight, as it's a nice little throwback to the original Ranger game, where these were three of the four Pokemon you had to fight in um, in the ruins to unlock um, Entei. So it's kind of a cool fight, even if it is definitely one of the more difficult fights you have to deal with. So yeah, that's why it's number two. But can you guess what's number one? Number one. All right, you probably saw this coming, but uh, number one is Regigigas. Now, Regigigas is on this list for many different reasons. Once you've actually captured all of the other 266 Pokemon in the game, a new area will open up in Hippowdon Temple. Um, to access it, you first need to get all three of the other Regis, Regirock, Regice, and Registeel. Once you go inside, you will find Regigigas, the hidden final boss of the game, or final boss of the post game, really. Now, getting to him already requires a lot. Collecting all the three Regis, going all the way through, uh, through Hippowdon Temple, and the fight itself is no joke either. This is easily the hardest battle in the game. Every time Regigigas walks, he creates a small little shockwave that'll damage you if you get hit by it. And then, every so often, he will stop and do a shockwave a little bit bigger, dealing a whopping 18 damage per hit. Now, even if you're, uh, even if with it being at the very end of the game, this is 18 damage where you only have about 100 health. So, it still deals close to 20% of your entire health bar, just even with this being this far into the game. The fight itself being incredibly difficult, um, and Regigigas requiring as much as it does definitely makes it deserving of the number one spot. Now one really cool thing I do want to mention is they actually use this exact same fight in the sequel Guardian Signs as one of the required bosses and I do think that's really cool. I do believe the fight got a little bit easier in that one but uh, it is still just a very tricky fight to do. With Pachirisu it's definitely manageable but without, you basically can only get like one circle in between every uh, every step he takes. Because otherwise you just take way too much damage from this Pokemon. So yeah, that's why it is number one. And there we have it. The top 10 hardest captures in Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Olmia. I hope you guys found that interesting. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Let me know in the comments if you feel I missed any Pokemon. Or if you had any troubles with any of these Pokemon yourself. With that being said, I hope you guys had fun, and until next time.